All right, what's up guys? Jesse with BRS Fresh. Today I want to talk to you about how I changed this entire 75 gallon aquascape while leaving the fish in it. But what I'm really going to show you is not only the techniques and how I did that, but also talk about the mistakes I made while doing it. Because if I were to do it again, I wouldn't do it exactly the same way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's where we're going to begin. That tank over there used to have a sand bottom. So the first thing that I had to do was figure out how to get all the sand out. Again, fish are still in there, water's still in there, uh, and I didn't want to get in there and shovel it all out. That seemed like a problem. So let me show you guys a little trick. Just with some regular vacuum tubing, right? About half inch tubing, I think this is. Vacuum tubing that you might have on a Python vacuum or something like that. This is how I got the sand out. Now I'm gonna create a siphon and you're gonna see that once you remove the vacuum end, if so if I have the vacuum end on here like I'm cleaning, it's gonna suck the sand up and drop the sand back down. You guys already know this. If you take that vacuum end off, it creates a much more powerful siphon. But before I do that, I'm gonna take one end of this and I'm actually going to cut right here an angle. Right, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit of an angle and I'll show you guys the reason why I like to do that. And I could probably go even sharper than that. The reason why I like to do that is it actually allows you to more easily get in to spaces in the corners. And when you're just using this to clean a tank and not remove all the sand, having like a little tip like this helps you do it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna grab this bucket. So for example, Let's just say I don't want to remove all the sand like I did in this aquascape and I just want to clean something. I'm going to start this siphon and here's a, here's a tip. Hold it like this. You don't have to suck on the end of it. Just hold it like this just below so your lips touch your hand and uh, you're still going to be able to get that siphon. All right. Watch how powerful this is, you guys. See that? So in this case, I'm just going to use it to take some of this top layer off, maybe remove some of the algae that I've got going on in this trail. Just clean it up a little bit. Just something like that, right? But if I come over here, and this is what I had to do on that tank, let me show you what happens. So I get down here just a little bit deeper, and I can just remove all this sand. Look how easily that goes, right? So if you ever need to, to remove sub, uh, sand, like you wanna do a changeover, or maybe you just don't like how that sand's building up a bunch of algae, whatever the reason may be, this is not necessarily a long process, guys, especially in a standard tank. Look how fast I'm, I'm getting rid of all this sand. Cool? All right, so that's how I got the sand out of the tank. So the next thing I had to do was put in the soil. And actually I did put in some lava rock bags, talk about that in just a second. But the next thing I had to do is put in the soil. And this is one of the mistakes, the first mistakes that I made. Um, so let me show you how you do this the right way. You're gonna take this soil and you're gonna put it in a cup, something like this, depending on how big your tank is. You can see like I can put literally half a liter right here in this. Now, you don't need to rinse this. Uh, in fact, that's gonna kind of create a little bit of a mess. So I'd recommend that you don't. Just take this dry and instead of dumping this in, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let this fill up like this. Just kind of chill for a second. And then I'm going to come down here and get pretty low. And then I can just start cruising across here. It's nice and easy. And again, I've got about a half liter in this cup right here. You can see all that sand that I, I took out. I'm now able to replace that entire area with this soil. And you can imagine again, fish are still in this tank, right? So I'm not creating, you know, a huge mess. All right. So that's pretty good, right? Like that's, that's not bad. Here's what I did over there. See the difference? <laughs> now I can tell you something. This was half a liter that I just poured in. That has 30 liters of UNS black soil. The bags are huge. And I was coming in from, you know, a height probably twice what I just did. Now you can imagine the effect that that had on that tank. Didn't look good. Got me pretty worried. I knew I had made a mistake. I knew it should have been done better. I was a little bit impatient. I wanted to get the aquascape done. I definitely would have taken my time, taken a cup, poured it in there nice and easy, the fish would have been happier. Now, all the fish lived, everybody's fine. First mistake that I made. All right, 
Now, the next thing is, come over here and check this out. So what we've got going on here is we've got two hills, right? And these two hills were formed with lava rock in bags. So once I had the substrate out, right, uh, or I'm sorry, once I had the sand out, then I wanted to build up these hills, and ultimately that's when I added the dirt. So let me show you how I built those hills and, and why. So just take, whoop, just take an easy, just, or a mesh bag that you can get here at BRS. Um, there are different sizes, so I actually have different sizes in there. I've got a little bit of a small and a, one that's probably about this big, a little bit of a combination. And what I'm actually using, you guys, are these little lava rocks that are actually meant for barbecues, or I should say outdoor fire pits, not barbecues. So these are meant for outdoor fire pits. I, I did buy these from an outdoor fire pit big box store. You can get them at Home Depot, you can get them online. Um, they are super lightweight, they're porous, you have water, they actually act as a filtration in your tank. Water will pour through them. You've got a lot more surface area on something like this than a regular rock because of all of those little pockets where beneficial bacteria can grow. So it's actually really great for your aquarium. And they stay, you know, rinse them off, but then they stay in this mesh bag and this allows you to do everything from, you know, making larger slopes in the back if you wanna do that, or making hills like I did over there. So once I had these set and I laid them down in the aquarium, uh, that's when I poured the soil over. And one of the things that I found, and I'll just kind of recreate it for you. These guys are hungry. You might have to feed them. I'll kind of recreate it for you. And one of the things that I found is you're going to get something like this. When you first do it, it's, it's highly likely that this is going to happen. I'll deal with that hair grass in a sec because that's also part of this plan. All right, you're gonna end up with this because this is just a really smooth surface and these little balls of soil are gonna roll off it and you're gonna probably end up with situations like that. Now, what I like to do is take just something smaller than that cup I was using before. This could just be like a small cup in your house or something like that. It could be just a regular cup. Um, and actually what I did was I even just came over here and where I had a little bit of depth I was able to just pick up some here, and you can see it's gonna to start to cloud a little bit if you get too rough with it. But just picked up some over here, moved it right over to this area, and then you can start just doing some real fine work as far as how you wanna cover up some of those spots that start to show up. Okay, so that's how you deal with that issue. Now the next thing I had to had to think about was the dwarf hair grass and what I wanted to do from the planting situation. Again, I'm sitting here, I got water probably about this high and um, I need to plant this hair grass. And I'll show you, I had a couple things to think about and there's a couple things that you're going to run into if you try to do this in water with fish, especially these fish or the plecos that are running around. I got a couple of those running around in here too. Um, so let's talk about planting first. So I'm gonna grab my UNS tools and we'll take, we'll take this guy, this little guy that floated up. It's pretty tiny. So you get your tissue cultures, you get your hair grass, and you start pulling, a, pulling apart um, your little areas of grass here. Now, what I wanna do, if, if this was a dry start, you guys, if, or um, if this was, if no water was in here, I would just have soil, I would miss that soil, get it a little bit wet, I'd have a much easier time planting tissue cultures. But because I'm planting in water, you know you're gonna end up getting, you're gonna get floaters. It's gonna happen. Um, one of the ways that I try to avoid that is when I grab the tissue culture here like this, I, I have the tweezers go all the way across the roots and I hold it at a 45 degree angle, probably even a little bit steeper than this, all right? And then I'm gonna take that down and what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go a little bit deeper than I would like that I normally would do. And then I'm gonna let go and I'm just gonna jiggle a little bit, but I'm gonna hold it there. I'm not gonna immediately pull up. And sometimes I'd like to pull back a little bit away from the plant and pull up, okay? That's how you can get it to stay in there. One of the techniques is you gotta go a little bit deeper and then the other technique is how you release it. Now, the other reality is when you're doing this is you're just gonna have to use your finger. You just are, and that's fine. Like you can just sit here and just, stuff these guys down. Um, I planted with tweezers first and then came back here with my finger and corrected a couple. I don't recommend coming back in and trying to correct with your tweezers. You're just gonna end up loose, loosening the plant roots and they're gonna start floating. Now, I would call this 
I don't know if I'd call this a mistake, but let's just call it a reality. If you plant hair grass like this uh, that hasn't you know, had a chance to take root and you have fish in there, especially plecos or something, you know, little quarries or something that's going to be on the ground, they are going to loosen those up. And for the first probably week, you're going to come in and find 15 clumps of hair grass floating on the top of your aquarium. It's just going to happen. Uh, these angels, I, I'll watch them. I think they know what they're doing. I think they're doing it to me. Uh, they, they'll come over here and they'll just start, you know, playing with the grass and the grass will float up and then they laugh about it and they move on and they do a different one. And uh, I just had to come in here for about a week and replant these things until, um, really until the grass started to root. And once the grass started to root and get a little bit of strength, then uh, really it stopped happening. And now, you know, for the most part, we're in good shape. Now this hair grass is going to start shooting runners off and it's going to start popping up in different areas. You know, we've got the CO2 running on both sides here. And ultimately this is going to be a cool sort of Scottish Highlands, Moors uh, vibe with, with hair grass really covering everything. So that's the idea behind this. Now, let me take you guys to one other mistake that was, uh, actually I'm gonna take you guys to a couple other mistakes that were made. Number one is this FX6, this big guy that I got down here. On the same day, you guys, on the same day that I changed over this entire scape, I actually also cleaned the FX6. Now, highly recommend not doing that. Um, now, I cleaned the FX6 the right way, kept everything in buckets, everything in tank water, but you're gonna lose some beneficial bacteria in the process. Uh, so I was starting at a little bit of a weaker point there when I did that. Here's the other thing, and this is really where it got bad. When I, this rock was actually all the original rock that was in here. So I took all that rock out while I was doing all the scape changes and I put all that rock on the ground. I didn't put it in tank water. And when I put it on the ground and it was there for two hours while I was doing all of this, everything here, all that beneficial bacteria, gone, right? So when I put all that rock back in, I've lost that beneficial bacteria. When I clean this, I've lost some be beneficial bacteria, but it gets worse. There were seven big pieces of driftwood in this tank, you guys. Seven big pieces of driftwood. We had a huge tower over here, had a couple over here. I took all those out and they didn't go back in the tank. They just went on the shelf. All the beneficial bacteria that was on those also out of this tank. So now think about the situation we're in. I still have the fish in this water. I have removed the majority of the beneficial bacteria that was helping keep the ammonia down, eating the ammonia, producing the nitrites, and then going to the nitrates, right? Like we know the cycle. When I pulled all that out, we lost all of that. And I was so focused on the scape. I'm embarrassed to say, but I'll say it. I was so focused on the scape that I lost sight of what I was doing, the health of the fish. So when I came back in here the next day, and I'm all excited about this new scape and the water's cleared up, I go take my NT Labs testing uh, center, bring it over here, put five milliliters in, and guess what happens? Huge ammonia spike, huge ammonia spike. Now, not to the point where it was instant death and they'll show the little skull and crossbones on the package. It wasn't that bad, but it was like a one, somewhere between a one and two. Definitely huge warning, huge red flag, immediate change is required. So the first thing I did was grab C Chem Prime. I put sea cream prime in here to d uh, or to chew, turn that ammonia into ammonium and uh, really detoxify that ammonia. Right, that was step one. Now the next thing I did was I grabbed Prodibio Ammo Stop, and Prodibio Ammo Stop is super powerful way to put in the, the bacteria in here that is going to get rid of all of that ammonia. In uh, two days, it was done. We were good, we were back, back to normal. But I had two pretty stressful days. Now I knew that the ammonia wasn't toxic anymore because of the prime, but it was still reporting you know, ammonia because it will still show green in the test, even if it's not toxic. The ammo stop from Prodibio got rid of all of that. But for 48 hours, I had a lot of regrets. I was very worried about these fish. I'm very thankful that none of them died and everybody's happy and safe and swimming and eating well. And the scape looks great. But again, guys, wanted to share some mistakes, wanted to share some, some tips on, on not only how I built this and some of the things that I used to do it,
but also some of the things that I wouldn't do again. And that is number one, I would be way more cognizant of the bacteria situation as I'm replacing and removing contents within the aquarium. I certainly wouldn't clean a filter on the day that I'm gonna make such a big change. And I'd be a little bit more careful about how I place the soil in the tank to avoid you know, a huge cloud. So that's the story. That's how we got from where we were to where we are. I'm super excited about what it looks like. I can't wait till all this dwarf hair grass grows in. I think it's gonna look awesome. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, hey, what's up guys? Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Don't go anywhere. I got fish to feed and you got videos to watch.